Hello everyone, welcome to my new airbrushing episode and today, once again, I'm wasting my money so you don't have to. So often when people think about getting into airbrushing on the budget, they think about mini airbrush compressors or compressed air cans just like this one. For today's test, I purchased compressed air can from Revel. It contains 400 milliliters of propellant for 10 euros, which is about 12 dollars or 8 British pounds. To make this beginner kit as realistic as possible, I also got a single action airbrush with all the necessary accessories. It will be another 8 euros spent. Inside of this kit we have a very basic and simple single action airbrush. By pressing top button, we can only control air coming out from the airbrush. With this kind of trigger, you can't really make very precise pressure adjustments. By rotating front nozzle, we can adjust how much paint will be released. If you look carefully, you will see how simple it is. We can't connect airbrush hose to the can without special regulator. These comes in various shapes and sizes, but I will be using one that came in a kit. We also get air hose, adapter for other compressors, and two 30ml jars for paint. These are held in place with help of friction. Keep in mind that only one color pot has active cap. Make sure that pressure regulator pin is not screwed in completely. You don't want to release air immediately after you put on the cap. After everything is ready, we can slowly start to turn pressure adjustment pin. So my initial idea was to complete one model using only this airbrush setup. So I prepared everything and this is how it went. Cheap airbrush just stopped working immediately. I believe it has something to do with quick pressure jump. I couldn't really spray in short bursts. Air would stop coming out if I released trigger and pressed it again. I even tried to spray in one single go. I'm not sure if I got faulty unit or some kind of pressure equalizer is required, but I decided to go on. So I just connected my harder and steam back ultra and proper air hose. This way I will be able to at least test air can. We will see how long it will last and what kind of experience it will be. Compressed air can actually worked great with harder and steam back ultra. However, after about 5 minutes, airbrush can was getting very cold and dropped pressure. I was making breaks, warming up that airbrush can and sometimes shaking it. I laid down about 5 coats of Tamiya's acrylic white. 
I also wasted lots of precious air by just cleaning my airbrush. I had to do it quite often, so it was very sad. So with 400 ml of propellant, I was able to spray about 60 ml of paint, including thinners. In my case, I used two complete pots of Tamiya's acrylic white. It was enough to completely base coat my model car. Obviously, that's not enough for a complete model, so I just used spray cans for the rest of the build. Build video is already published. I wouldn't recommend airbrush cans for beginners or those who are building models on a regular basis, but definitely it has some uses. I can see artists using it for some kind of effects, maybe shading, maybe improving their regular drawings or paintings. It is great for demonstrations at class or maybe some kind of shows, but definitely not for model making on a regular basis. Thank you for watching and see you soon in my next modeling episode. Or maybe review. Or test.